piece of truck, piece of truck, piece of truck, piece of truck, piece of truck. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah. Do we have enough light? No. I don't know, I think we're lacking here. Hey guys, back on the bench tonight in the studio, Keith Jesse. Uh, this week we picked up a whole whack of RCs. Um, a lot. A lot. Uh, we got the Snap-on uh, delivery truck X-Max. We found one of those finally. That was a good deal. Picked up the UMG-10. We picked up the SMG-10. And uh, we ended up buying this. A guy that ordered it in. Turns out it wasn't what he wanted. He had it for a good price. So we scooped it up. Uh, no real research we did on him. Uh, just besides reading the box. So uh, yeah. Reading over the box. It looks like it comes with 80 millimeter shocks, full metal gears, uh, planetary transmission, uh, C channel metal frame, full bulb bearing kit, 1.9 wheel and tire, uh, all metal links on the uh, four link suspension front and rear. Uh, it doesn't have a three link and a panard with what we're used to seeing with all the new uh, trucks from your SEX 10 2, SEX 10 3, TRX 4. I think everybody's pretty much running three link and panard at this point in the game. So, uh, pretty decent truck. We're going to be running this one with a 35 turn three slot motor from Horizon Hobby. And powering that with the Hobby Wing 1080. Uh, it comes with the free programming card. We know not much about these, but a lot of guys are running them locally, so we're gonna get our hands on that and throw it in. Uh, we did pick up a servo for it, but it's a Reese 400. It's a little bit too much for this truck. We're probably gonna th swap that in with another one of our trucks and put a little bit of a cheaper servo into this one. Uh, one thing we did find on it that uh, we did not know before we bought it was this little information right here where it says there is three degrees camber on your front C-hub. Now this truck has a front portal axle and a rear portal axle that are the exact same. You can put four wheel steering on it, I assume, because it's the exact same as the front. You just have to get another servo plate and a couple more links to make it work. Uh, if that's the case though, we're gonna have that three degree camber on both sides and that's gonna make the truck look funny. Uh, so, you know, we can just only build it and hope it doesn't look too bad with that camber. We like trucks with nice straight up and down tires. Uh, this is the upgraded model that comes with the CVDs. I guess there was another model before. I, I guess uh, the GP1. The GP1 didn't have the CVDs. Uh, four CVDs because your front axle is the same as your rear axle. So uh, yeah, let's crack it open and see what comes in the box. Besides the truck, of course. Body, of course, looks like your classic FJ. Good size Toyota cab. It's not small like some have been in the past. So yeah, main bag here, Toyota body in it, and a whole bunch of parts. Get a little bit of step in. So the frame does have a little bit of step in. Usually we're seeing these on the axial, quite a bit of step in right here. So this one's just a little bit. I like to see a little bit more because it gives you a wider belly pad and tighter in the front for your axles and your suspension to fit in between your frame rails. So it's not too bad. Fairly decent looking deco sheet. Very nice mass sheet, kind of has a Tamiya kind of a look to it ish very nice I like that it's very nice these are um, not the rims that are on the package so these are the rims that they've given us they're not the ones on the package or a five-star which we don't have any problem with uh, they look good they are not a beadlock they're just a simple glue on tire Otherwise, packaging is really on point for all their labeling. I'm just looking for what they give you for any oils or grease, if any. I heard that uh, some cases guys don't get any. 
And if they do get some, it's barely enough to get the job done. There's your greases and oils and wrench and parts bag. So the pinion gear is included. It gives you, actually, this is a nice little wrench down here that we can keep for other things. Nice little wheel wrench. It's really nice, actually. Yeah. Number 10 mineral oil. I'm guessing that's for the shocks. We're going to put some 35, 45 weight in the shocks. See how they perform. But otherwise, yeah. Um, looking pretty good. Everything's packaged nice. Parts bag one. Nice and simple. Um, we're going to uh, dump the rest of these parts out. And let's uh, get building this thing. Jesse's going to take the honors on building this truck. I'm going to do the paintwork on this body. Well, he does that, so we can try to bang it at the same time for you guys. Oh my gosh, parts bag, one, two, three, I'm scared. Where's the D-bag? It doesn't have a D-bag. Oh I know, right? Number four. Number four is a D-bag. <laughs> <laughs> Manuals, as you know, in the kits we've built before, they, if they have a certain pin size, they'll have a legend on the side where you can lay the pin over. However, you'll have to go back to your first page with your index, and you can actually take the bearing. Oh, none there either. You can take the bearing or slash said pin and lay it down over top of the drawing right there to confirm you are using the right size. If you do not have a caliper or a way to measure it, or if you're not sure, just go back to that page, page one and put your pieces on top of that and lay it out so you know everything's perfect and continue. So, uh, not really a big deal, but we do like to see for uh, new builders. Um, what is yes. it called? A parts legend. Parts legend. Okay, so right now Jesse's building the transmission. Uh, he'll get that together and then we'll just touch base in there again. Build update, where we at Jesse? I've started the chassis, uh, motor trans is somewhere, transfer case is done. Sort of looking at all those trucks behind you. Ooh, they're so pretty. It's shiny things. How was the transmission build? It was okay. Um, they don't tell you what to grease, they just say grease. To grease or grease? Grease. So you gotta kind of figure it out for yourself. I'll show you here in the book. Grease. Thank you. Did they put it on a stick in the picture? They put it on a stick. Looks like a match. So I don't know if I'm supposed to light it on fire or put it on something. But I've associated the color of the grease with certain surfaces. So that's that's how it did it. Probably probably right. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Uh, the gear mesh is not fun to do. Because you can't really see, you can only do it by feel. I like to look at what I'm doing. Okay. So it's a front mount motor and transmission with a oh, yeah. kind of a reverse planetary because it has your motor that then goes to a spur gear which then runs to an internal planetary. Yeah. And it comes where to most the times, yeah, which will run to a divorce transfer case. Where most people, if uh, manufacturers, if they're going to run a planetary, the motor goes directly into the center of the planetary, so you don't actually have to do that extra step down. It's kind of an odd setup. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. We had to charge batteries, so we didn't. Uh, you missed that part. Sorry, guys. All right, and that's it for building these. This is not a different day with the different shirt. I just decided to change for no apparent reason at all. checking over the shocks they give you these uh, spring rate cards
So they give you a full set of golds, a set of silver, and a set of red. Now these are different spring rates for harder and softer. Now what you want to pay attention to is right down here, they give you a little explanation. The We're fronts you want. Huh? Ooh. We're not a little bit closer. Tiny. The fronts you want gold and silver, and the rears you want gold and red. What up crew? Keith on the bench tonight. Long weekend. It's actually Thursday. I took a day, day off work. Mr. Jesse going to the cabin. I'm going to finish off his build so we can get on to the next build. That's okay. He cool with it. Okay, so chassis done. Links are laid out. Um, Servo's on. We haven't centered it, put any power to it yet, put the ESC, none of that good stuff into it. I did, however, from what the instruction manuals tell you to mount the servo in this configuration. That's for a right-hand drive vehicle. Um, where we drive, we have left-hand side vehicles, so if you sit on the left-hand side of the truck, your steering arm is going to come from the left-hand side of the truck and go down to the passenger side. On this side of that side of drive. If you drive on this side of the truck, that way. So we reverse the servo and change the top link. That's just a matter of just putting it in the way that works for us. Like no, uh, no different hardware. It all worked. What was in there? So. Okay, back again here. We've got the axle sitting underneath the truck. Shocks in, looking good. Sorry for the funny camera angle, I don't know what's going on with that thing, but. She's looking good, riding good. The truck feels really nice. Drive line feels good, nice and smooth. Um, yeah, looking pretty good. Um, the rock sliders, putting them on the side. They didn't go in quite far enough for our likings. So took the razor saw and at the center of the second hole up, we chopped them down. So now when we sit our body on top, they're gonna line up with just outside the edge of the body and look really good. Good looking truck, good feeling truck. I don't like the camera angle like I said before, but you know, that's, who knows? Maybe the Works good. We're gonna find out this weekend. There she sits, nice and clean, battery tray in the back, nice divorced tractor case. Divorce means it's separate than the motor, it's not a complete built down unit. Uh, yeah, pretty good, pretty cool. Sitting a little bit high. Once we get some tires on this rig, she's gonna be sitting pretty tall. But, um, yeah, we'll uh, put her through a pace on the weekend. I'm gonna uh, jump into wiring this thing up. You guys don't need to see that. And uh, next time you see it, it'll be together. I promise. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that brings us to the end of this build with the uh, MST CFXW with the F45C body. 
I believe that's what they're calling this one. Um, out of the gate, we built the truck as the manual suggests. Uh, we ran the wheels and tires supplied with the truck. Um, the tires are horrible. Uh, the wheels kind of don't suit the style of the truck really at all. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we wanted to run it to see what it was like out of the box so we have a comparison to after we do mods, right? Like you should with anything. So we ran it. Uh, truck performed otherwise pretty well good. Um, no complaint. Drive line was crazy smooth. A little bit top heavy. Um, I would say more for an experienced driver out of the gate. Um, with an experienced driver, you can get around with the truck pretty good, have a lot of fun with it, not flip it over. Obviously, the body's still not all trash and beat up, so we obviously didn't tumble it. Uh, the wheels were the only real uh, downside on it um, that were giving us any kind of trouble out there. Uh, it was a little bit cool the day we were crawling. It wasn't a hot day by any, by any means. Um, so yeah, we decided to switch the tires on it to some Traxxas uh, Trail Canyons. These came off of our VS6R410 whatever build there. Uh, so they're nice and broken in and super soft already. So we threw those on there with the stock wheels. We're going to do that on the other side. And we are probably uh, going to lower, actually no, we are going to lower the shocks. Just put a limiter in at uh, 10 mils. So right there where it sits in its sag, we're just going to stop so it can't come up any higher than there. And we might, might clip the springs a little bit to give it a little bit more sag from that point back down. Or I'll take them out, squish them a little bit, see if we can get them to uh, get down there. But yeah, otherwise, uh, classic the way the body lifts, nice and uh, the hinge style. Everybody's kind of going with something either hinge or um, what is it, hidden body mounts or something nowadays. So it's uh, on point. <coughs> The motor, as you've seen in the build, I don't know if we went over that too much in the build. I know uh, we had a lot going on that night. We were kind of doing the build. So uh, it's a planetary, but it has a pinion with a spur that which then goes into the planetary. It has a uh, slipper adjuster nut exposed underneath here on the front uh, below the motor, which you can get to, which is nice. And then that runs to a divorce transfer case in the middle. Um, this little plastic dog bone dry shaft Kind of seemed a little bit weak, but it's got such little load in there, it's totally fine. Um, we had no concern on that. Uh, we went with the Hobby Wing 1080. That's our first Hobby Wing ESC. Uh, liked it, we will buy more. Uh, no complaints there. Uh, SR315 receiver, so we could throw a servo winch into it. There's a ton of space in the front, so I should be able to 3D print a bracket and throw a Reefs uh, servo winch in the front. And then we threw the Reefs 400 SC V2 servo on there. Uh, crazy fast servo. I was not, uh, wasn't ready for that kind of speed for it. Things ridiculous. Uh, we're running that at, I think, 7 volts to uh, whatever we cranked up this EC to its max. So, um, crazy uh, smooth drive line. One of the smoothest ones out of all the trucks we've built in a while. And we've built a lot of trucks. I have to give them credit on that. Uh, really quiet out of the trail. Just creeps along. Sounds more like a, just like an ESC fan running more than. A truck <laughs> um, yeah it kind of has this little bit of slop not as bad a slop as some other bigger brands in their brand new release but uh, it's got a little bit of slop in it and it kind of free wheels and then catches up to that and you, when you're going real slow kind of down a hill you'll you'll feel it doing that a little bit but it's it, it's not enough to be the concerned about you you'll just notice it if you're kind of critiquing it right so but yeah, otherwise, uh, great truck, a lot of fun. Uh, tires were junk, throw those out. Don't even put them on the truck when you're doing the build. If you're going out, uh, put something else on it. This body is very heavy. Um, it's super thick Lexan. It's it's like 0.40 or something like that. It's pretty heavy duty. And then this bed itself is uh, injection molded, really heavy. Uh, this bed itself weighs as much as probably a fully detailed, <laughs> uh, fully trimmed like Traxxas body or something, right? So. But yeah, very uh, cool steering angle, top notch, and the camber on the truck, uh, which I said from day one we weren't happy with, uh, didn't realize the kit had that built into it. Didn't notice any problems, but you know, the rear's got toe in, the front's got toe out. Um, it's you know, a little bit strange, a little bit strange setup compared to what everybody else is doing, but 
I, we couldn't really tell if it was um, made a good crawl or not because we took it out with the stock tires and they were garbage and we just didn't. We wanted to run it that day and see what it was about, right? See what their offering was, so. Okay, well, that is where we're at on this one for now. We're gonna get out and play with it, maybe get some lighter springs in the front, but um, they were 80 millimeter shocks. Right now, the way it sits, we put a 10 millimeter spacer in the front so it can't droop anymore on the front suspension. The rear still has that little bit of droop we left in it. We're gonna leave that in there to give the back end a little bit more articulation than the front with the with the uh, limit in the front now it's going to help hold that weight down as you see now it's trying to pick a tire here instead of trying to pick a tire here which pushes the weight over so we're going to try to use that to try to keep it more planted i think a combination of lowering the front or limiting the front we didn't lower anything we just limited the front so it can't droop like the back and these wider tires which i have to say look 10 times better because it kind of hides the camber with the fatter tire on it instead of the skinny um, we do need to change the front steering link because it has a three degree toe out. The rear has these lockouts that have a three degree toe in and both axles are cambered this way, three degrees. It is set up as a racing truck. <laughs> right? I would say so. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they, it, it's a race truck. We'll go with that. So yeah, I think uh, that's gonna be it for our next adventure. I'm liking the way that's feeling. It's going to be a guaranteed a whole new animal now, especially with the best tires you get for free nowadays. I think these are the best uh, RTR tire that's on the market or kit tire that you're getting right now. So, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. You like it, maybe? Nothing to it. Yeah. We'll throw some details at it, get some decals on it, get some video out on the trail, and uh, on to the next build.